Hello everyone, Tabitha here. Um, today I got a request to see how I get, how I organize, how I get so many paints in my palettes. So today we're gonna break some palettes or at least let me show you how I break palettes. And so let's go ahead and start with something like this. This is your, or let's go here. I'm kind of winging it today. I didn't kind of lay this out or anything. Um, most of the palettes that have the dual trays kind of like this have where you can get an extra pan right in the middle without any problem. It just fits right in there and then you don't need to move these around but sometimes the um, palettes come too close like this one where there's no way that you could get in a whole nother row and so you're kind of wasting all this extra space because I don't know many people that actually like lay their brushes in there or anything. I'm sure some people do, but if you want to get the biggest quantity of paint into your palette, uh, this is the route that I do. So what I do is I pull out this tray and I go ahead and I take the screwdriver, flathead, I'm unprepared. And I go ahead and I actually shove it underneath here and I wad and you can see it popping already. Um, it comes up really easy. These little things pop right out of the palette. And so what you can do then is you can actually move them over just a tiny bit and get in your whole extra row then. And how I secure that extra row is I use either this mounting putty underneath the strip so I adhese it to like all these little pegs. Now it does sit up kind of a little bit higher but when you put the magnets on the middle row it tends to completely like even it off. Um, this is sticky and it is um, removable. So you can actually pull this up with no damage to any place else. Um, or I have used regular Gorilla Glue to also put them in. Now on the on the palettes like this, where they're kind of the lumpy, I just take the screwdriver and I actually pull out all of the interior, those little flaps that separate the half pans, because otherwise you'd only get two rows in here. And you can actually get four rows into one of these palettes. So I rip out all the interior and I don't know if you can see on the back, sometimes it, you can see kind of like the little dimples of where they were attached. So you'll have a little bit of that on the back of the palette where they were attached. Um, there's like a whole sheet of metal and even here but those pop out in about the same way. So you'll be able to put four rows in one of these type of palettes. Now, um, then let's go to the bigger palettes and I do them slightly different. So this one is uh, with the two rows that I've gone ahead and I've moved it over and you can see that there is just a hint of a lip between the height of those little dots from me replacing this bar to where the magnets are holding it. So, but it's so slight that it doesn't even affect how you use it. So that's leaving in the, the four rows and then putting in the middle row. All I did was remove this bar and this bar out a little bit and it gave me enough space. Sometimes I've had to remove all four and bring out both sides in order to get that middle row. And sometimes palettes have that middle row available right off the bat. And then on some of my larger palettes, um, I noticed that if I just left this row and left this row and removed with the um, screwdriver these two of these entirely and just lifted them out, on this tray you can actually see, let me show you, that Uh, there is no there is no holder on that. I just go ahead and put the magnets on all three of the interior rows and it still holds everything on the tray and they don't move anywhere or anything like that and you can block them in perfectly into the row. 
So that is how I get the most out of my palettes because doesn't it always seem like you've got a couple extra paints compared to like the amount of paints that you have? But then let's say you have a palette that's beautifully filled like this and you're like, oh, but there's that one other color that I want. Then what I do is I yank out uh, a where I would put it in the palette, and they sell these type of pans on Etsy, and they, they, um, so you can get, like, two colors in the space of one, so when I've had that happen, um, and expanded my palette, but I didn't want to, like, go up in size in a palette and have a whole bunch of empty space, because my area is really, really small, so space is a concern, so I need to get as much as I can <laughs> into the smallest spot possible. So I came across these, and I really um, enjoyed having these to alter all sorts of my palettes, but then I had another problem. Let me see if I can find where I had the other problem. I know I have it somewhere through here. <laughs> I got so many paints and I have paints that I just poured and I'm drying and all sorts of stuff. Nope, not that one. Hold on one more second. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So I just did these because, uh, I wanted to add two Da Vinci colors into my palette, but the Da Vinci, I had bought, uh, originally a set. So they have their pans. So sometimes it's a little more difficult to get all their pans in here. And sometimes you know, you get that extra pan, but you can't really take out the pans that, like, they manufactured because you don't have the tubes. So, my son, on his 3D printing, he's brilliant, um, I wanted to get these two extra colors in here and had a little bit of space with jogging the paints over. So, these actually are little pans that are just as tall, but they're half of the size of a standard pan. So at the end of every row, if I wanted to add a color without actually changing the palette, and then what I do is, then I don't even redo the card, I just simply um, make another little swatch and tape it right over the spot where I put them, and then it's all set to go, and I don't have to change the whole palette out, and redo the whole swatch card, and all that kind of stuff. I just kind of popped it in there. We'll see how much I use it. And if I want to expand or change the whole palette later, then I can do that. So like I said, I had a request on how to make these palettes fit as many. Oh, you know what? We should, these fit 21 when you, when you do all three rows. If you take this out and you use the bottom and use like magnets or sticky, um, the mounting putty to kind of even off the bottom and make them all level, uh, it will fit about 23 pans. Um, so let's go ahead and grab out these other palettes and I'll tell you how much they hold. So a palette like this holds 39 paints when you, so normally they come with 12. So if you add the extra one to make it tight at both sides and then you add the extra row, you can get 39 paints in a standard palette. Now on these palettes, if you do take out the whole tray, you can maybe fit in an extra one or two if you jog it and kind of angle these and stuff because this takes up a smidgen of space, but you can't really get more in these palettes than the 39 paints, even if you take out the section. It's just the way that they're built. Um, the section, you know, being removed like that. Sorry, my palettes are a little dirty. Um, and then, like I said, some pans are different sizes, so I have those little half ones to alter. And then in this, let's see, how many paints do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So there's 13 again, so that's what, 39, 49, 50, 51, 52 paints in one of these type of palettes. So that's quite a bit, 52 paints. And then if you use the little halfers into the half space, um, half pan space. Now I'm going by half pans because of course full pans take up double the space or almost double the space. Um, <clears throat> you can always get in a few more colors. Um, these pans, it does make them kind of small, but you know, as a, as a good solution to it. And then in these, uh, I think it's 60, isn't it? Oopsie. Every so often the magnet will loosen up. Uh, yeah, 13 in each row. 
you know, um, what is that? Yeah, about 60 paints you can get into one of these large ones. Let me double check that. Yeah, it is 61 paints that you can get in here um, with 13 across with leaving the tray in. Now, on a palette like this, if you do take this tray out, you can get in <clears throat> a few more paints as well, probably about four or five more. If you jog them on the side, turning these to the side, you can get in an extra couple to take up this little bit of extra space that this palette has, but you can't get in too many more. So, that is how... Oh, and there's one other palette. Actually, two other palettes. So in the Holbein one, they put magnets on the first four rows, and I did one of my little half pan thingies there, but they left a space for a brush, so I put a, a magnetic, if I can get one out to show you, they're pretty tight. I put a magnetic strip on the bottom and magnets on there, and it does the same thing like the rest of them. So that's how I get more in that palette. And then my thing is, is once the palette's full, I can't buy any more. <laughs> so that's why these are all really, really packed. I know it's sad, but don't we all do it kind of a little bit? And instead of going up in palette size, this is how much room I have, so I have to max out. And this is the Roman Schmal. So this is their, let me back out just a little bit. This is their, um, their palette, their wooden palette. And what I did is I took the screwdriver and I dug out from all the glue and removed all that and their top mixing space. And I put colors in both sides. It works out perfectly with all the rows being horizontal and then the last row being vertical on both of them. And you can fit in, I think this is 106 colors total that you can fit in this palette of full pans. So you'd get probably about double that in the half pans. And what I did is just to make it really tight, I used sticky tack on the bottom of all these. The bottom was a little lumpy bumpy from the leftover glue, so I used sticky tack and it kind of evened them all out. They're really nice and tight. And then I put in a couple popsicle sticks just to block it in really, really tight. And then my swatch card can sit right in the middle between the two sides. Nothing sticks, nothing drips and it works out perfectly and closes right up. And then I have everything in a really nice, tight little package. And I don't know if you can see off to the, oops, sorry. <laughs> the camera's right in front of me, so sorry about that. Um, I don't know if you can see off to the side, but I have some new stone grounds, some new deep, deep light, and I have, let me see if I can cover. I have, this brand coming up in the near. We're gonna be doing some swatches, so stay tuned, subscribe, come see me, and I hope this helps, and I hope that I answered my requests. I had several requests for this, so I knew I had to just kinda of jump in here and show how I wad in so many paints in one palette. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.